Comic Book 101 class is in session. Comic fam, make sure your pencils are sharpened. Get your head off the damn table. You can't be sleeping. Class has started, and we got Sammy from Skeleton Key Comics on the line, broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. How you feeling? Pretty good. I'm looking forward to talking about second appearances and going over some really cool Q&A questions that we got from our IT comic community. That's right. We are going to be covering some spec, some collectible comic books that are affordable that a lot of people are sleeping on we source questions from the community over on instagram you can follow me at comic tom 101 by the way where can they follow you sammy you can find us over on instagram youtube and whatnot under skeleton key comics hit the like slap the subscribe button and don't forget we also post this audio only show on soundcloud spotify stitcher and itunes second appearance is sammy People sleeping on them. People don't realize that there are still affordable key books in the marketplace. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like second appearances get slept on and I feel like they're not talked about enough. Um, I feel like a fun part of the hobby is that even though I can't like, for example, I can't get that giant size X-Men one right now, but I can get that X-Men 94, you know, I enjoy it, love it, take it to cons, get it signed and stuff like that, where you get these books that are a fraction of the price. And some second appearances are like 10 and 20 bucks. I mean, I've found second appearances in my PC in dollar bins. We got a list of 10 books. Let's start them off with the first one. We got Nova number two. So the first second appearance that we're going to be talking about on the show today is Nova 2. You can find this as suggested pricing of $12 to $40 on the high. This is the first appearance of Powerhouse, first appearance of Condor, but most importantly why we're talking about it today is it is the second appearance of Nova, where Nova's first appearance is like kind of soaring to the moon. We find that Nova 2 is one of those books that you can find at your shops, online, or even at cons that are going on at a really affordable price and could even be found probably around 20 bucks. Completely agree. Comic Femme, when I first started talking about Nova on the channel, it was like three plus years ago. Kevin Feige joined a podcast and actually said that Nova was a character that they had pictured on the wall because they had planned to bring him to the screen. A year plus went by. He visited the same podcast again and said the same thing. Whatever lulls that experienced post the first spike got another shot of adrenaline and the book kept going up. July of this year, we heard rumors, courtesy of Key Collector Comics, that multiple Multiple characters were slated for live action adaptations. Nova being included, seeing a $40 suggested pricing on the high end for this book seems drastically low when the 9 eighths of Nova 1 exceed 1K. Next, on the list of 10, hit the like, slap the subscribe. We have Thor 338, the second appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Tom, I love this issue because there is nothing like a thick, Thor cover, and not only is that, it's got Beta Ray, Beta Ray Bill. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I was like stuttering. All right, so like he's like Tom said, it's the second appearance of Beta Ray Bill. We saw him already on the tower on Thor Ragnarok. He's already there. He already exists in the MCU. Yeah, his first appearance has gone to the moon, and I definitely understand that. But this book right here, it is, in my opinion, it's sleeping. At a mid of $8 and a high of 20 like we found a copy of this for our PC for less than 20 bucks. This is an incredible grab and I feel like it has so much room to grow. I cannot wait to actually see Beta Ray Bill on the big screen and once he's there, this book's going places. Butch in the house, he thinks this book is low as well. $20 average sales on the high end. That is the price that you would expect spec that is risky to hit, let alone spec for a character that we know exists in the MCU, as Sammy just said. What do we got at number eight? At number eight, we have Amazing Spider-Man 134. Not only is this an incredible action cover of Spidey and Tarantula, but it is the first appearance of Tarantula. But the reason why we have it today is because it is the second appearance of The Punisher. You can find this at a mid um, suggested pricing around $50 at a high end of $150. 
I know that there is so much hype, conversation, and drama going on about the Punisher, and I feel like that has just put him in front of everybody's faces. But not only just that, as his first appearance has just continuously gone up over the years, um, we find that second appearance something that's really obtainable and uh, findable as well in the wild. There's even some additional drama to this comic book because at the end of this book, we do see a full shot of the Punisher. I used the 180-181 threshold. Did Punisher show up the same amount as Wolverine does in 180 or more? In my opinion, it's more. Thus, it becomes the second full appearance. However, for the longest time, members have looked at 135, the next issue in this run, as the first second appearance. And they consider this one a second appearance in Cameo. I have to know what the community thinks in the comment section. Let me know. And I'm going to tell you about number seven on the list. We have Star Wars issue 43, suggested pricing of $15 on the mid and high end for $65. And it's on a downward trend. What's going on, Sammy? We have a double key to talk about. All right, we absolutely do, Tom. This is the first appearance of Lando. They have been like dangling Lando in our faces for way too long. But beyond that, it is the second appearance of Boba Fett. And I am a huge fan of Baby Yoda and Grogu. So yes, I am very excited about Mandalorian, very excited about um, what they're doing with the book of Boba Fett. And so, yeah, we find this book trending down and it's like funny and not shocking because I don't know about you, Tom. One thing I've noticed about Star Wars is when Star Wars is between shows and movies, it's like crickets. But when that show or that movie is happening, Star Wars is absolutely on fire, like immediately. That's what happens, which is why the comic fam needs to hit the subscribe button because we're going to be covering comic books like this. Not every book is extremely expensive and some key books are worth having in the PC regardless of spec and others may see some upward trajectory happening. Next at the list, I put Vengeance issue number two on here. We have a Gabriel Del Otto bullseye cover that should make this comic $20 alone. However, this is the second appearance of America Chavez. Multiverse of Madness spec confirmed in the trailer. This book at 20 bucks is criminally underpriced. I can't believe that this book is only at a high of $20, but I'm super glad because number one, I haven't found this book in the wild yet for the first appearance. And number two, that white cover is dangerous. And number three, She's out there. She is in Lego. She is in the Doctor Strange trailer. She is in action more than just like a little drop. So I am so excited um, to not only see her on the big screen, but to hopefully get the second appearance before it is too late. And now another character we know is on her way practicing law. Are we going to see Daredevil? Are we going to see Bullseye? Well, you know, we're going to be seeing She-Hulk. I can't even express how excited I am to see She-Hulk because she is like a total badass. Um, anytime I can see like that woman power on the big screen, I'm like all for it. So we've got the second appearance of She-Hulk at a mid of nine, high of 35. Um, so it's definitely not too late before the show comes, which I can't even remember when that's happening, Tom. Do you? Last I checked, sometime in 2022, and with She-Hulk 1, 9.8, comfortably sitting above $1,000 for months now, the second appearance under 40 seems better and better by the day. Next up on second appearances, we have Spectacular Spider-Man 90. This is one of my favorite black suit keys because I got to remind the community that not only is ASM 252 the first published black suit appearance, there were two others that happened two weeks later. That's right. It's not just about Secret Wars 8. Matter of fact, these three books that I've just mentioned, which we have again, ASM 252, the first appearance that debuted at the end of January. A lot of publications say, January 31st, two weeks later, we have released at the same time, Spectacular Spider-Man 90 and Marvel Team Up issue number 141, both tying the second appearance of the black suit. It wouldn't happen until months, six plus months later in Secret Wars 8 that we would find out how he received the suit 
on the Battle World Secret Wars event that took place. So for me, you see three different keys that happen within two weeks of each other. All of those seem more exciting to me than Secret Wars 8, which is on a downward trend, by the way. While we know Secret Wars is great spec, however, the Spidey in that classic black suit that would later become Venom is such a major collectible that you got to look at the two other appearances because some would even state that all three of these should be tied as the first. So number three on our second appearance list is X-Men 130. We definitely had to pop in an X-Men uh, issue. Some of you guys know me. I'm a huge X-Men fan. It's like kind of behind me. And this issue, it's like a quadruple key. Quadruple key. Oh my gosh. All right, you've got the first appearance of Dazzler, second appearance of Kitty Pride, second appearance of Emma Frost, the White Queen, and the first full appearance of Sebastian Shaw. Um, you can get this at a mid suggested pricing at $80, um, upwards to $225, and it's on a downward trend. I find this book. I see this book often a lot in the wild, I should say. And it's just one of those books that, you know, where we see like Kitty Pride, X-Men 129 is, it's, it's up there, that's for sure. We see 130 as that book that's like easier to grab. A mutant character that is beloved by the fans of her. Like Comic Book Girl 19 has even said multiple times on the mic that this is like one of her top three favorite mutants. And when you meet a Dazzler fan, they go all in on Dazzler. Absolutely. I'm just laughing because it is so, so true. Um, Tom and I were just talking too about um, what if, and I was like, I was crossing my fingers for so long. I'm like, okay, what if Dazzler becomes the Herald of Galactus, please? <laughs> well, hold tight. It may happen. We still have more what if shows. And once the mutants get introduced officially in the MCU, all of these books are going to be ones you wish you grabbed when they were on the low, just like this one. Next on the list, at number two, Incredible Hulk, issue 182. Now, technically, the third time Wolverine pops up in continuity in a comic book. The technical second appearance in cameo because he's so brief in 182 that giant size x-men he actually gets the title of the first second appearance however for the longest time this was known as either the second or third appearance doesn't matter because when 180 is outpriced 181 is gone to the moon and back and back to mars now going to pluto which isn't even a planet what the hell well giant size x-men you're not going to find that anywhere. So 182 looks better by the month because this book's on the downward trend. That's right. Take a look at this. I actually wrote this up because I put this on me and David's list from Comic Book Investments. We did a cold list, uh, 10 comics that are down in price. September 8.0s hit 637 on the high for this book. Current prices are under $300. I really like what you said there, Tom, because you're right, like 180, 181, giant size X-Men, they have gone up so much, they're hard to find, but I love that Hulk 182 is one of those books that's left behind on the walls, and sometimes you can find it in the back issues as well at cons or shops. Number one on the list today, hit that like, stop the subscribe, we have Avengers issue number 11. Now, the suggested pricing is going to be a little tough on this one because... Although it is double-digit Avengers, it's low double-digit. We have the second appearance of Kang in comic books. We also have the first Spider-Man crossover. Mid-suggested pricing is hovering around that $300 marker. And on the high end, $1,000. But again, depending on grade, you're going to be paying a pretty penny for this one. But... Kang was easily one of the biggest villains introduced this year. Probably tied with Kingpin in Hawkeye. More spoilers. I'm sorry, watch Hawkeye. And Sammy, you just experienced selling a low-grade copy of this. How'd it go? I do this silver bronze age sale every Saturday morning. And I'm like, you know what? You guys are waking up at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 on the West Coast where you are, Tom. Um, and I'm like, all right, we're going to do this. I'm going to bring the books, something to wake up for. I bring stuff like Avengers 11, right? And it's fun because, you know, someone got a great deal. I feel like it was um, a lower grade copy. But I mean, gosh, this book is so old. <laughs> it's been around for so long. Um, I Every time I see a book that has survived like 50 years, 40 years or even 30 and it's paper, 
It just amazes me. So anyways, it sold for a little over $100. Someone got an incredible deal, which I love that. And that just is one of those things that goes to show that even though you see it at the suggested prices of a mid 290, you can still find this book out there on the cheap, whether it's, you know, in whatnot auctions or eBay sometimes when you find those crazy deals, cons or um, out at your local shops. Comic Familia. We had some technical difficulties with the second part of this show. However, it was too important to miss out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder, comic collector, dealer, and content creator here on YouTube, Reggie Collects. Comic fam, we got one of my best friends in the community on the line. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Reggie Collects. How you feeling, brother? I am feeling good. Thank you for having me on the show. I think there is a big thank you needed to be bestowed to you because not only have you been working hard for the community for years now on YouTube, you just accomplished something major. You wrote a book. Tell me about it. We did. We wrote a book. Uh, it's called The Guide to Smart Comic Collecting, and we sold out relatively quickly of the guide. And we, we put this guide together because we felt like there was was a gap out there, an opportunity for us to speak directly to people that are new to the hobby, newly returning to the hobby, as well as the seasoned veterans that have been in the hobby for decades. And so we wanted to put together something that was a, a practical resource for people to be able to use to better understand the hobby that that we love. And so that was like the, the motivation behind Doug and I coming together to put pen to paper to put this guide out there. How long is the book and how can people get it? The first print is 80 pages, roughly. And uh, you cannot get it for me because we actually sold out in about three and a half days. But people can actually get the first print from you because you are putting it in your mail call. So you can drop the details of that. But right now, that's the way to get the first print. Uh, the second print is available for me, but I definitely want to encourage people to stay tuned for that first print coming in the mail call. All right. Well, Reggie just broke the news. Comic fam, your second exclusive going in one per box. Reggie, why don't you do the honors? You know, we had to support another independent YouTube content creator, comic fam. We have three different versions of Reggie's new book, and he has them in person right now. It is an homage to Wizard Magazine from back in the day, something that I picked up and absolutely loved every single month that the Wizard dropped. This is basically the cover A. Then we also have a virgin version of it with a white background. And then the very last one is this one, a black cover. And honestly, they turned out incredibly well. I am super pleased with how well they look. And hopefully everybody out there will be pleased as well. That's right, comic fam. I took my friend and put him on his own book, dressed as Spidey, dressed in the wizard robe. ComicTom101.com to join the mystery mail call. Secure one of those versions. They're going out at random, including the virgins. And Reggie, why don't you tell them about one of the biggest points that you wrote about in your new book? We spent a, a lot of time cramming a ton of really great information into the guy, right? We wanted this thing to be a practical resource for collectors of all experience levels. And so one section that we spent some time on was grading. And, and I think that grading is one of the more daunting aspects of the hobby. And, and I say that because Grading is a, is a skill that has to be honed, it has to be refined, it has to be used if it is to be effective. And it's one of those areas that for whatever reason, um, people don't want to invest the time, energy, and effort in. And so what we tried to do in the guide was to present a few different ways that people can think about grading and the rationale behind it and how it can actually help them. And one of the concepts that we present in the guide that I've also covered on my channel is this idea of dirty grading. And this is something that you guys have spoken about recently, but dirty grading, the idea behind it is that if you're out hunting comics, if you're at a con, if you're in a LCS, if you're you know picking up comics from some random person on Craigslist or something like that, you need to be able to do an assessment of 
the grade of that book, right? You need to be able to figure out whether this is a high grade book or a low grade book. And, and part of it comes to, you know, you need to be familiar with the grading criteria that are out there, right? So you need to familiarize yourself with, with Overstreet or CGC or CBCS or PGX or what EGS, one of the platforms that's out there for grading. And if you're familiar with those criteria, you should, over time, be able to look at a book and evaluate, is it high grade, is it low grade, by looking at the defects that are present. By doing that, it allows you to then be able to figure out how much you should actually pay for that comic. The last thing you want to do is to not be able to grade, be in the wild, buy a book that you're overpaying for, and you're essentially catching a brick, right? So grading is important. And so my hope is that people will get the guide and will take the time to figure out how to grade and at a minimum, figure out how to use a dirty gray technique to make sure that they do not catch a brick. All right, everyone. So here it is. Reggie collects the guide to smart comic collecting. I love how it's comic size, you know, and it came in, literally came in a comic bag, which is so awesome. I love like it's so condensed, like straight to the point because it is like that study guide, but it's not like OMG, like, you know, those the dummy guides that they have and they're like that thick and you get it because you feel like you need it, but then you never read it. I feel like this could become a collectible and I've already started highlighting in it, but I love that you said that that's what your hope was, is that people would use it as a study guide. And one thing I've really enjoyed after this whole year and last year is I find them on the screen so much from like homeschooling to comic stuff and research. I love even more just having something in my hand. So I really, really appreciate that everything is right here condensed in the chapters. But going back on the dirty grading, and I know we've talked about it before on the show, you said that the term of dirty grading simply means to do a quick grade of a book yourself. And we referenced you before, you have a YouTube video that covers dirty grading, and it's just so important. And for me, I feel like there's nothing more empowering in the hobby than being able to go to a con or an LCS or look at a collection and being able to check the condition of the book and know if you're getting your best value. I spend uh, a lot of time talking to collectors, right? As we all do. Like I literally talk to collectors every single day around the world and have for years. And so part of what inspires me and motivates me is my goal to try to help as many people as possible, right? And, and I recognize that creating YouTube content is fantastic, but as collectors, as people that spend a lot of time looking at screens, as people that want to touch some stuff, we decided to actually make it a print guide because we wanted it to be in the hands of collectors. We wanted it to sit on the desk and be used as a reference. So I'm glad that you like the, the feel of the guy, but the, these interactions that I have with collectors all around the world, this, this desire to empower people, this desire to help people be more informed about the hobby is what informed us to the fact that we needed to create something to actually help people, right? There are a ton of different resources out there, right? And, and the goal was to try to consolidate a lot of different ideas, a lot of different tips and pointers into one, you know, consolidated thing that people could could use as a point of reference. And as I mentioned, grading is a daunting thing for a lot of people. So we wanted to try to simplify it. We wanted to make it easy. We wanted to make it so that people could be empowered to be able to look at a collection, look at a book, go to a con, go to an LCS and not overpay. But we had to make it simple. We had to make it straightforward. And, and that is what we poured into the guide, these practical tips and pointers for people to be able to leverage. Make sure to hit the link in the description. Go follow his YouTube channel. Make sure to pick up a copy. If you're a mail call member, you're going to be getting one. And Reggie, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. And remember to geek responsibly. 
Comment, like, and subscribe. I want you to win a Venom number one homage on Venom First Host issue number one, first appearance of Telcar, a Shattered Comics Matt Damasi variant. Also, congratulations to the last winner of our Comic 101 show. We posed the question to the comic fam as we end the year, what do you want to ask us? Is there anything that the comic fan wants to know, Sammy? Because they hit us with some questions, and let's start them off with the first one. All right, starting right from the top, we have our first question from Vanderler14 on Instagram. They asked, what is your preferred comic pricing guide, service, and why? For example, go collect GPA, etc. My answer is all of the above. I use so many resources when pricing books. And on that topic, we actually just chat with Red 2 Collects, who's going to be on the show chatting about his guide to comic book collecting and this right here, talking about the different resources for pricing. I am also in the same boat as you, Sammy. I use all of the things listed here and more. You know, when you have a book that you're trying to Figure out what to pay for. You got to use every service that is at your disposal. I frequent GPA on a daily basis. I live off Key Collector Comics. I use it when I'm in the bathroom even. By the way, utilize Cotom 101 on the app. Unlock a free two-week subscription of it. Get access to a plethora of info as well as suggested pricing. All right. The next question came from Jay Vallegas. 2071. Do you have a favorite storyline that you recommend for someone getting into comic books? So we have a recommendation from both of us. The first one is mine, which is Chew. In a world where chicken is outlawed, we have a detective who can see everything psychically by tasting the item, whether it's food or people. This is a book that whenever I recommend it, it leaves my bookshelf for weeks, sometimes months, for non-comic readers, it's intriguing enough to hit them with something that is so comic booky that it's a win every single time. What about you, Sammy? For me, I have to say Saga. I haven't read anything like it ever before. It was highly recommended to me when I first started reading comics, and I've been in love ever since. It's like that perfect blend of romance and action fantasy and it's just it's just such a wholesome story that has mystery and i don't know i just feel like everybody needs to read it with the hiatus coming to an end soon we're gonna be getting more saga in january expect a lot of attention on this title and for those who haven't read it you're gonna be wishing you were caught up because this is also a must read and one that frequently gets borrowed off my, I'm just going to call it a library now. All right. We have mirror dimensional mirror dimension comics are restored books desirable or is it a bad investment? Ooh, I love this question. The purple label known as the dreaded purple label. What do you think, Sammy? So this is one of those questions that I feel like has two answers as a collector I say a grade is better than no grade. I have restored books in my PC and I love them just the same as I feel like if I could have acquired them um, otherwise. So as a collector, if you're really trying to get that key and you might not be able to afford the one that is unrestored um, and you can only afford the one that's restored, then I say go for it because you can really get these books at such a what feels like a massive discount. Now, when you're talking about investment wise, I would say find it within yourself, channel it, think on it. Um, my biggest tip here is that if you're looking for an investment, um, is it that you're purchasing a key that is resto and hoping that it goes up in value? Obviously, that's always a risk. Um, or are you looking to remove the resto off that book that's when you really have to lay his eyes on that book and say, like, what's this book going to become once the restoration is gone? I think you got to get a second opinion sometimes even. You know, there is a lot of comic books that come in and out of the show, you know, from guests that everyone knows where, hey, is this possible? Should we break it out? What do you think? And sometimes it's too risky. Other times it's worth the gamble. Now, one thing that I'll point out is that we've seen such a major uptick in 
variant comic books, newsstands, Mark Jewelers, even Whitman's are becoming more and more sought after. Restored comics, um, incomplete comics, these are things that are kind of the low, they're on the lower end of the list. These are the things that are the most undesirable books. Now, with that said, Blue chip books have never seen the heights that they've reached until this year. We are reporting on some of the biggest market changes, record breakers in comic history. And what happens when those books get so far out of reach? I suspect that a collector is going to care less and less if a coupon is on the inside. Maybe we should be looking at the green labels, the purple labels with a second look. Potentially, they may be the most affordable in higher grade, regardless of if they've been tampered with or enhanced. Next question we have. Oh, and here's a nice uh, purple label example, by the way, Detective Comics. See, a 9-4 of that. I wouldn't mind that in my collection. Okay, next one, we have Legion of Paper. Thank you so much for commenting and providing a, a question to us. One book that is a must-have in 2022. All right, the first one we have on here is your pick, Sammy. We have Shazam issue number eight. Shazam 8, you got Black Adam. So for those of you that don't know this issue... I feel like it's just one of those books that's just super slept on. I'm super excited for the movie. But outside of that, where we see Marvel Family 1 as one of those golden age goodies that is just so far out of reach. And I mean, this book is expensive. I think once we see Black Adam on the big screen, I don't think everyone's first choice for books to pick up is going to be Marvel Family 1. Of course, we'll dream about it and wish that we had it but where that book is probably <laughs> close to the price of my house um just thinking about it i just absolutely love shazam number eight for that reason is because to me it's like the best sec like second best like it's definitely a second best where you see the reprint um of that marvel family one in this issue for the first time you know take a look at shazam 28 the first modern appearance of black adam that book at a nine eight is being listed for above six thousand dollars you can secure the first reprint really the first appearance of the character post the golden age for under a couple hundred dollars and this is a thick book hundred page giant these things are really tough and high grade don't be sleeping on Black Adam. And another book that you shouldn't be sleeping on? Well, we also have Vengeance Number 1. America Chavez, I've gone on the record multiple times. I am personally investing in next-gen heroes. America Chavez, Riri Williams, uh, you know, totally awesome Hulk, Amadeus Cho. Well, Vengeance Number 1, now that we know America Chavez is indeed coming for Multiverse of Madness, we're likely going to see her utilized, whether it's on Disney+, Plus and or other films. Gorgeous cover and that white cover with black on about a, I don't know, what is that, a fifth of the book? It makes it tough and high grade. Look for those nine eights. And if you get lucky on a raw copy, send it to Sarasota. Get it in CGC's hands. You won't be disappointed. All right, Tom, you totally missed one of the variant edition of Vengeance number one. Have you picked this one up yet? Absolutely. Actually, I skipped Vengeance 1 and went straight for the 1 in 25 variant. Because when I spec, I spec hard. Okay, the next question we have from the community comes from Matt Martins, 007. 007. What's the must-grab title of the year? The Anyo. Well, we have the first one picked by Sammy. I would say my favorite read of the year, favorite pickup was Stray Dogs number 1. I loved this one because I didn't think I was going to enjoy something that was horrifying and scary in any way, shape or form. But when this was suggested to me a lot of times, I finally decided to read it. And it's just so cute. The art is just it's brilliant because it makes you like tap into seeing like Lady and the Tramp and those movies um, when you're a little. So you have those emotions of like, oh my gosh, so much cuteness. Look at these dogs. And then all of a sudden, I won't spoil it because you need to read it. Um, all of a sudden, these dogs are put into this horrific and I mean horrific situation and then you just find yourself like really rooting for these dogs like really rooting for them like turning the pages like okay okay you could do this you could do this and like no 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 don't do it so it's just like an emotional roller coaster and horrifying 
all in one. I can't recommend this enough either. Tony Fleece, Trish Forstner, absolutely killing it. One of the best independent titles to come out this year. Some of the best variants of any run coming out this year. Okay, my pick this year. Because, you know, honestly, you pick Stray Dogs. That could have been at my number one as well. I'm putting Porn Sack Pisha Shouts, The Good Asian Oh my gosh, comic fam. You heard Fire Guy Ryan and I talk about this for about 15, 20 minutes on the last podcast. You heard it on the Trending 10 with Russ Bright. This book is so superb and it deserves all the credit that it's getting. Take a look at this. We are finding out that not only is this book breaking records, people are shouting from the rooftops that you need to read it, not just me, but you're also seeing it make multiple best comic lists of 2021. I'm really hoping that this comes out in a hardcover. It's a detective noir following one of the coolest, the first Asian American detective and a story that is so intriguing. It's gripping and historically accurate that it needs to be on everybody's shelf. Can't recommend it enough. Next question comes from Fulton D66. Our last question today, what is your most favorite con experience, Sammy? I had the pleasure of meeting you and Tony. I got to meet Theo, Rage Theo, the powerful Rage Theo, over at Torpedo Con. I was only able to go to a couple conventions since the two-year absent, but that would be definitely one of my favorite experiences this year. What about you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would say seeing everyone in person, hanging out, having so much fun together, experience the con, experiencing the after con. Um, As you can see, the photo that we have up here is my my girlfriends. Oh, my gosh. I miss them already. Just looking at this photo. Danielle and Cheyenne. um, We're at C2E2 hanging out afterwards um, at an arcade. Some of the guys on whatnot. We've got Skeff, Slabulous and... The company man, um, Mr. Wink Inc. And uh, one of my friends, Mark, taking a selfie for the first time. This is our first time meeting. Miss him already, but it's like so exciting. Like after knowing people for so long and getting together, that is such a beautiful thing. Then another amazing experience that I had um, at Comic-Con, my first time ever meeting Chris Claremont at NYCC. I was nervous for two reasons because it's Chris Claremont so of course I was like super nervous and like I was so nervous when I walked up to him I didn't even have my books like out of the bags and boards and I just like cracked a joke on myself to him I was like there's always one isn't there and he just started laughing he was like there always is and I was like I'm just fangirling so hard I like forgot to have everything ready but you know the other reason I was nervous on that note is because Tom when you like really hope someone did something for a reason you know Chris Claremont brought diversity and female empowerment to comic books I was like fingers crossed Chris Claremont did this and he has a story behind it and he did it for a reason to empower, you know, people of color um, and to also empower women. And I mentioned it to him and he told me these incredible stories. We put it up on our YouTube channel about his mom, about women that he's seen in the military and how he wanted to do his part and bring that to life in comic books and how he wanted to bring everybody represent everybody in comic books and that was what i wanted to hear wonderful it's a special thing being able to meet uh creators that you're fans of that you look up to that you look forward to seeing their their output in the community and i will say you know because the question was all time favorite con experiences i'd have to give that to donny cates Everyone knows him. You know, I had a really fun moment meeting him. This is a shot from a video that's currently on the channel. Anyone can watch it. Just check out the video. I'll put the link up here. But I was, I had an opportunity to gift him a Carnage Mind Bomb, the the comic, issue number one. And he had a great story behind it. It was a good moment for me. And I got to see that he was just like a real person, a real comic book nerd. And I was able to relate with him more in that moment than I think I've been ever been able to relate to a comic book creator. So it's a special thing. And I mentioned that because Sammy, you gotta hit him with your Donny Cates story. 
All right, so yes, Donny K and his gorgeous wife Megan were neighbors of ours during the Torpedo Con, and first found out when um, Tony and I and Rage we were all about to go out. I had to go back in the room and girl up and get ready. So they're downstairs in the lobby waiting for me. I'm getting ready in the room, and I come out, and Donny Cates is literally two feet from my doorway with Frank Cho, and I was like. I was just staring at him for a minute. It just felt like a lifetime, but he was staring at me. I stared back at him and I was like, are you Donnie Cates? And he was like, he was like, yeah. (laughs) I wonder if he gets that a lot. Like when he's not on the con floor, you know, just like in, it's like standard civilian life. Are you Donnie Cates? (laughs) I know. It was just so cool. And he was like, who are you? And I was like, uh, I'm Samantha, huge fan. Actually, I told him, I was like, I have books in my hotel room for you to sign. And he was like freaking out like, oh my gosh, are you serious? Like we're next door neighbors. And I was like, my husband's a huge fan too of both of you guys. You guys, I was like, can you come downstairs at the lobby with me and meet them? And they were like super excited about it. We went down in the elevator. We got pictures. That selfie right there was taken down there. Um, and ever since, every time we see them at the con, like Donnie always comes around the booth or he came by um, and stopped by one of our whatnot streams that we had um, going on at NYCC to see us. So we've had like this like neat little like touch and go relationship of seeing each other. But One thing I've got to say that I just loved about that whole thing is he was just like him and Megan are just one of us. They are nerds and they're super, super sweet, super nice. And it's just one of those things like that just helps makes you realize like these guys are just everyday people enjoying the hobby, the way that they're doing things and art and writing. And it was just like such an amazing experience. Comment, like, and subscribe. We're going to have more content for you as we go into 2022. Can you believe it? This year went by quick. I want to know your convention experiences because everyone's is unique. It's special. It's always amazing getting to meet the comic community in person. And I'm sure you guys have your stories that will enter you in a giveaway. Make sure to join us every single Wednesday. Start out at 2 o'clock with Jem Mint. It's your boy Jem Mint. What Not Wednesday is the best new app to buy and sell funny books. Expensive paper comic books, you know, expensive and affordable. I mean, really across the board, you can get something that you're going to enjoy and join us. We have Sammy and Tony. We got Rage Theo, Danielle from Nerdy Girl Comics, Jem Mint, as mentioned, myself, Comic Pops. I got them back into comic books this year, comic fam. It feels good. We have the Golden Age Guru, Russ, the comic sensei, and as always, geek responsibly and happy new year. Enough said.